Hello, my name is Lana, and I'm 10 year global some multiformer survivor. Well, my videos mainly are focused on me trying to overcome and fight my neurological condition, ataxia, and my wheelchair baldness. But that's just the side effect. So, in this video, I'd like to tell you about my primary disease. I will skip a lot, otherwise I would need to shoot the whole movie. This all started in 2005. Uh, that summer I was suffering from headache syndrome. Well, I was thinking in just a migraine or something like this. Then it was all gone for several months. In December 2005, I started to walk like I'm drunk, uh, fainting fits, and excuse me for this delicate detail, you can never see no more. So I was pretty much sure it was something wrong with my stomach. At the same time my granny was panicking about me being pregnant. Uh, later on, my mom would say it would be better if she was just pregnant. So, in January 2006, I called my mom over to Latvia and explained everything about what happens to me. And not her mom, like, what to do? And she just told me to come over to Latvia and do some checkup. At that moment, I was working in her beauty supplies as a sales assistant and also in Spirit the Night Club in Dublin City Center as a hostess, as well as doing some fashion modeling. Years later, my neurosurgeon will give a guess that my illness was provoked by fatigue. So I took one week off and flew over to Latvia for checkups. Over there I went to the hospital same day I arrived. Well, I had lots of different checkups. Even had gastroscopy and some pregnancy tests. Also my blood tests were absolutely perfect. Doctors did find some issues with my stomach, but just to be sure, they wanted me to do computer tomography first. After computer tomography, radiologist or whoever he is ran out of his room and asked me with big mad eyes, "Did you ever shake your head before?" And I like, "No, why?" And he said, oh, you don't want to tell you everything. But my doctor didn't tell me anything. He just told me that I need to do one more checkup, MRI. So after me and my mom were sitting and waiting for results in my hospital room, doctor came in and announced that I have a brain tumor. For me, it felt like a ton of bricks just hit my head. Basically, it was just the end of my life. Doctors were saying it's too late to do the operation. I was refused by many hospitals. But finally, we did appreciate one doctor to do the operation for me. I never knew how dangerous is my tumor. Nobody told this to me. Well, they did tell my mom, but she preferred not to let me know about it. As I wasn't really making a big deal out of my illness. It was just a small nuisance for me. Only in 2009, I will find out how Dangerous was my glioblastoma multiformer. I had my first operation on 14th of March 2006. It was lasting for 8 hours. 
Also, my heart stopped during it, but it ended up successfully. After operation, I found out I can't walk and I have a tremor in my body. Couldn't even sit down myself and had to be fed. Suicidal thoughts filled my head. I had some infection, double meningitis, which all affected my recovery. After the operation, my mom was told by doctors that uh, there is no point to do any treatments for me like radiation or chemo as I will die soon anyway. Well, my mom's reply was that they are not God and they cannot predict it. She was right. I kept coming for MRIs after three months, after six months, year, year and a half, learn to walk with dick. Doctors were confused. My tumor was growing but very slow. One doctor made a guess that my tumor was capsuled while I had infection after my first surgery. After one year and eight months, I started to experience headaches Fainting feeds, roughly weekend, so I did check ups again. Now I had brain oedema. Shant was inserted in me through the surgery in November 2007. After this operation, my condition didn't improve at all. I became even weaker, started losing hearing, sight, ability to talk. So I did new MRI and the results showed that my tumor is back. Doctors were just making a helpful gesture. Oh, there is nothing else we can do. I started to make inquiries about euthanasia. Fortunately, other doctors were found in Moscow through a good friend in Dublin and the hope was given to me. But later on, this hope was ruined as unaffordable money needed for the treatments there. And we already spent everything for previous operations. It was a sunny day of May 2008. I remember that day very clearly. My best friend Tanya came over for her own birthday as I was in very bad condition myself already. And I said to her, Tanya, I'm dying as I don't have any more money for further treatments. For a few minutes she just stared at me with no words. At once she started to cry. And said to me, no, I won't let you die. I will do anything. I will find money. In that moment, I was thinking it just emotion speaking at her. I don't really know what happened after. Just one day, my mom came over to me and explored about fundraising night happening in the club I worked before. Articles about me in newspapers. Pretty much similar things were happening in Latvia, just on a smaller scale. Tanya and my mom did everything behind my back. I was shocked. I was very ashamed. I was screaming, crying. How could you both do this to me? Why, why would you not just let me die quietly and peacefully? Right now, I want everything to be cancelled. Mama replied, too late, article is coming out tomorrow. It was such a tragedy for me. I was so beautiful and successful, I preferred to hide my illness. I felt humiliated to ask for money.
The fundraising event was named London's Night and was taking place at the Academy on July 4th. It was the former Spirit nightclub I was working in. At that moment I was in semi-conscious condition so didn't really realize what was going on. Now I do understand that it was the most amazing thing which happened to me. I don't have enough words to see how grateful I am. Nobody will never understand what it means to me. Finally, money were gathered. There were a few other sources as well. I would like to underline that not any penny was spent on anything other than my health. As a result, I decided that now I just don't have the right to die and just must stay alive. In Moscow, my mom was told that it would be better if the doctor who did two previous operations for me and already knows inside of my brain will do another operation for me. Chemo was sold to me and further guidance were given to me by Moscow doctors. The doctor is later was perceived. It's a separate amazing story how. There is lots of mystery going around the whole story. I had my third operation and hopefully the last one on 30th of July 2008. Operation was lasting only 6 hours and was very successful. Third away my hearing and sight came back. I was able to talk again. After that operation I had the radiation therapy and chemo. All my treatments were finished in May 2009 and I became fully recovered from my disease. Well, I did put a lot of weight on during all these treatments. Was 94 kilos, which is nearly 15 stones, but a healthy diet and physical exercise helped me to gain my present shape. I've decided if so many people knew about my misery, now it's fair to share my joy. February 2016 was 10 years since I was first diagnosed. Hope it's gonna be many more years.